How's it going guys, Chris here, and it's time to kick off a brand new series, checking out all those weird and wonderful alien creatures you'll be able to find over Starfield's vast galaxy. There's a lot to be discovered out there with the game having tons of different planets and systems, but in this Starfield Safari, we're going to be focusing on the Alpha Centauri and Narian star systems first, both having several planets home to unique creatures. So Alpha Centauri is pretty much Starfield's first major star system, acting as a central point which branches out to loads of others. There's two planets in this system with native alien creatures, with the first one being Jemison, where you'll be able to find the United Colonies capital city of New Atlantis and the base of Constellation. Now you're not going to find aliens running around in the city, but if you venture off into the wilderness, you will be able to track quite a few down, with Jemison having nine species in total spread out over different regions. Some of these can be found not too far away from New Atlantis, with a fairly common one you'll run into being the Pat Coral Bug, which initially you might mistake for some funky looking plant, until of course it decides to chase you down with a bunch of its buddies. The Pat Coral Bug's got a head like a vibrant flower, and long stick like appendages to skitter around on, blending in with its environment, typically found bunched up together in small groups, hence the name. These guys aren't particularly looking for a fight, but they'll quite happily take you on if you get a bit too close for comfort often working together to slice you up with those bug arms while slapping you around with that tail, and using numbers and speed, they can quite easily overwhelm you if you're not careful. Also able to fire projectiles from that flower head if you're just out of reach of their melee attacks. Though a creature which should be easier to spot due to it essentially being a huge alien bird of prey which flaps around high in the sky, the Apex Parrot Hawk is another fairly common creature you'll find, gliding around looking for its next meal. They're pretty defensive creatures which prefer to stay away from you most of the time, giving you a warning not to come closer by hovering around and giving you a bit of a death stare as you approach. Invading their personal space isn't going to please them, and as you'd probably expect from something called a parrot hawk, they've got a pretty strong beak and powerful talons, which can be used to viciously attack you as they swoop down from the heavens. The problem is half the time, because these things are flapping around above your head, it's not always easy to predict when one's just about to turn gangster on you, with them sometimes being out of sight. Probably best listening out for that danger music, being a good indication that one might just be about to glide down and scratch your hair off. Though not everything on Jemison is out to try and give you a bad day, with it also being home to the Kara Snail Scavenger, a peaceful creature that can be found scampering around on the floor, sort of looking like a coconut that's just decided to get up and go for a wander. The creature's shell-like exterior helps it blend into the environment, most likely to help it stay hidden from predators, having a fairly natural appearance with camouflage similar to the terrain it's generally found on. Brown ones look like tree branches, yellowy grey ones blend into the sandy deserts, and the white ones resemble large rocks found in the area, though they also look a bit like they've joined the Sith having a bunch of sinister red eyes. Nevertheless, despite how evil these things might look, these guys aren't going to cause you any harm with the Kara Snails being weak, defenceless things that just like to go about minding their own business. So quite a few of the creatures on Jemison prefer to travel around in packs, and if the name doesn't give it away, the herding cutterhead herbivore is one of these creatures, often sticking together to have safety in numbers. Looking a bit like a big alien lizard cow that's lost its false teeth, the cutterhead probably gets his name from that blade-like spire protruding from the top of its head, used as a defense weapon to ram its attackers when threatened. They've got reptilian characteristics, having scaly skin, big fin-like sails running along their backs, and generally a bit of a dinosaur-like appearance. Definitely not as good as those crafty Kara snails though when it comes to blending in with their surroundings, with these guys having loads of bright colours, making them stand out like a bloody billboard. Is that a problem for the cutter head? Well, not really, being backed up by all their mates should they get themselves into any conflict. Not to mention the fact that they also have a rapid heal ability, letting them recover from any wounds they sustain in battle. Sharing the airways with the Apex Parrot Hawk, there's also another, albeit much teenier flying creature called the Flocking Seabat Geophage. Small and typically harmless creatures with weird looking faces, sort of looking like what you'd get if you fused a bat with a slug and then shoved it into some sort of radioactive bucket to mutate wildly out of control. They're a little bit cute in a weird sort of way, but not so much when they decide to attack you. A bit of a pain in the ass to deal with, being so small and agile, making the sea bat an awkward little bugger to hit as it spirals around you. If there's a bunch of them all attacking you at once, then they can be even more annoying, slowly chipping away at you from multiple angles. Though thankfully, they are generally peaceful creatures, so unless you decide to slap one in front of his mates, the sea bat probably won't give you any trouble. With all that said, the parrot hawk is definitely still king of the sky, preying on the poor sea bats while showing them who's the real boss. Speaking of things that look a bit mutated, 
Found in similar regions, the much bigger hunting tusk frog will roam the lands, showering the place of its sheer ugliness. It's got a face even a mother wouldn't love, though despite looking like some sort of science lab abomination, you've got to admire how weird and creepy these things are. Not just from their overall appearance, being covered in eyes, boils, legs and tusks, but the way they waddle around on those chunky legs too. These guys might seem a bit on the dopey side, but they're faster than they look, and those powerful hind legs can be used to propel them through the air, letting the creature leap over distance to both cover ground quickly and pounce on you to cause some damage. They're called hunting tusk frogs, but despite the name, they're still defensive creatures which will only attack you if you get too close. Though having several different ways to cause harm, being using those big tusks, leap attacks or even spat out rocks to hit you over range, it can still hold its own pretty well in a fight. Moving into the forested regions of Jemison lets us discover some new life forms, with one of those being a beetle, but not just any beetle, one that's the size of a dinner plate. It might seem pretty big compared to the ones we're used to seeing back here on Earth, but the beetle grazer is still one of the planet's smallest creatures, and because their shells often have similar colours to their environment, just like the Karas snail, this lets them blend in better with their surroundings, making them a tad trickier to spot as they scurry around on the floor. They're flat prehistoric looking bugs with six legs and a skittish temperament, found in forests, frozen mountains and along certain coastlines, and as you probably would have guessed, they're also really weak, so probably a good job they've got that camouflage then. If you've ever wondered what would happen if the Cordyceps virus somehow made its way into Jurassic Park, then you'd probably wind up getting creatures that look a little bit like this dude. The Herding Reef Walker Scavenger is a bipedal alien resembling a dinosaur that's had a bit of a bad experience with fungus. It's got strange tubes growing out from its body, a flat beak like jaw, along with a few extra arms thrown in too for good measure. Those tubes might have something to do with the creature's ability to withstand toxins in the air, possibly even harnessing it from those annoying vents bursting out from the planet's crust. And this might also have something to do with them being venomous too, something else you might want to take into account. The reef walkers typically hang around in small groups for added protection, not really being hostile unless you wind them up by getting too close. I guess it might be easy to stumble into a gang of them chilling out as you wander around, with them blending in pretty well with the surroundings. Though something else that also blends in well, but is generally a lot more ferocious, is the Apex Crocodont, and with a name like that you can expect these guys to mean business. Although on first inspection they might seem to look a bit crocodilian, as the name might suggest, but just like the reef walkers, the crocodont also seems to have a beak like jaw too, making it a bit more of a bird type thing, only one with six eyes and a large bulky muscular body, allowing it to charge at you fairly quickly over distance and lash out with its claws and mouth to dish out the pain. Being territorial creatures, this also makes them highly aggressive and often prone to attacking you and other aliens on sight. And because they've got loads of health and powerful strikes, they're definitely something you'll want to keep an eye out for as you go about your travels. Not being quite as common as some of the other creatures on Jemison, but still something that could ruin your day if you're not careful. So moving away from Jemison now, another planet to feature life in the Alpha Centauri star system is a rocky one called Yagarin, a bit of a backwater planet home to mining colonies and industrial settlements. If you wander off into the wilderness though, you'll be sure to find a whole host of funky aliens to discover, with the planet having eight native species in total. One of those being the herding coral bucket filterer, which is pretty easy to spot with them practically being everywhere, floating around in large groups high up in the air. Now these things definitely have a unique appearance, sort of being a bit like a sky jellyfish, while having a head that sort of looks a bit like one of those scrubber sponges you'd probably see in your girlfriend's bathroom. Coral bucket filterers hover around in a pretty graceful fashion, littering the sky in numbers, though despite looking like something that's just casually floated in from Barbie land, these things do have a darker side being surprisingly territorial and fairly aggressive towards anyone who challenges for their space. They're not particularly fast mind you, so they're pretty easy things to outrun, while the whole gang elegantly drift down towards you from the heavens. And being slow moving, airborne targets, they're also not going to be a problem to hit with your weapons too, should they decide to become an issue. Another fairly common creature that shouldn't be too hard to find is the flocking shardhopper geophage, which is essentially the starfield equivalent to a giant space cricket. The creature's name does it justice, with its body comprising of spiky purple shard-like armour plating, and also as the name might suggest, these things tend to travel around in flocks, hopping around while following each other and often just trying to stay out of harm's way. Despite having all that tough armour and looking like some sort of badass bug transformer, shard helpers don't really have much health and are generally pretty timid creatures, though they can reflect melee damage so I guess that armour is not entirely useless after all. You'll find them leaping around the rocky deserts, wetlands and swampy areas, 
though they're not the only big bugs you'll find on Gagarin, with it also being home to a few others. But before we take a look at those, let's pay a visit to a familiar face first, with the pack prong wing sea bat being a relative to those teeny little Jemison variants, having a very similar appearance, only being a hell of a lot bigger. This extra size also makes them deadlier too, not helped out by the fact that they're spread out over most of the planet's surface, grouped up together in large packs, also having a wary temperament, making them more prone to attacking you if you stray too close to their flock. They're able to soak up a bit more damage too, as you'd probably expect. But worst of all, the proc wing sea bat can also inflict laceration damage on you with those sharp talons, having negative effects on your health, being an affliction which needs to be remedied by visiting the doctor, or using specific items like bandages to get rid of. Not good. Though going back to the bugs now, where we'll be able to find the flocking coral crawler geophage, or as I like to call it, the pomegranate spider. These guys seem to have their abdomen split apart, with a bunch of strange fungus looking growths protruding out of them and along the spine of their bodies, giving the creature a bit of a funky appearance. It's another alien creature that prefers to live in groups, seen scurrying around the dusty deserts, just hanging out and loving life. But like many of the others you'll encounter, they don't like to be disturbed, and doing so can cause a whole pack to turn savage on you, with them all hunting you down while snapping at you with those little pincer jaws. Because they're pretty quick creatures too, you might be best gunning them down until the rest of their bodies decide to retreat, rather than trying to dash away having them all nipping at your heels. Or you know you could always just try and stay out of their way, which might be the more sensible option. If that's not enough bugs for you though, then we've also got the Trilobite scavengers skittering around on Gagarin too. Much smaller critters that kind of look like some sort of alien horseshoe crab type thing. Nevertheless, it's got loads of eyes, legs and a strange looking nose and you'll normally see the Trilobite wandering around on its lonesome, minding its own business, sometimes digging around in the dirt, probably trying to find something to eat. They're not exactly scared to come up close to you, probably got more balls than most of the other creatures on this planet, yet they've got barely any health, and no ways to really attack you, so don't expect them to put up any sort of a fight, though they do have a bit of camouflage to try and fool possible predators, having a shell which is usually coloured to match its environment, hoping to protect it from becoming another alien's dinner. One alien that might try and make you its dinner could be the Apex Dust Devil Exo Runner, who's probably won the contest of having the coolest name so far. These guys probably wouldn't look too out of place in one of the Tremors movies, having a protruding beak jaw with lots of thick craggy armour plating, which is resistant to energy weapons, physical damage and can also reflect your melee strikes too, making it pretty damn effective. They're no doubt one of Gagarin's most fearsome predators, being built like a small tank, and having those long powerful legs lets the Dust Devil Exo Runner dash around quickly to gain ground on its targets in no time at all. Having a high health pool also means that you're going to need some pretty strong firepower to take them down effectively when they come charging your way, which is definitely best done sooner rather than later, with them slashing away at you with those claws while whipping that bony tail around to knock you all over the place, having more staggering ability in the attacks. Taking a dip now in one of the planet's bacteria riddled oceans, if you look out onto the horizon, you'll sometimes be able to spot huge creatures flapping around on the water's surface. These are the sunfish filterers, huge alien fish that resemble stingrays. Pretty harmless things despite looking like something you probably wouldn't want to go near, but still a fairly awkward creature to actually swim with, due to the fact that Gagarin's oceans are highly contaminated by microbiome, which have nasty effects on your health if you stay in them too long. So although the sunfish won't cause you any direct damage themselves, studying them up close can do if you're in the water with them. Of course, these creatures are resistant to this bacteria, most likely thriving on it by using it as a food source, in a similar way to how a lot of whales eat plankton back here on Earth. Though you might notice that something's a little bit off, as lots of the sunfish you'll encounter are just floating around dead. But it's not the microbio killing them, it's something else lurking in the water too. The sneaky culprit here is the pack sea hag, a weird fish with a brain for a head that typically hides deeper below the water's surface, only to rise up to strike its prey from below. Although they don't tend to swim on the surface as often, the sea hag is generally more common and easy to pick up on your scanner, due to them being in small packs spread out under the water. And unlike the sunfish filterer, these guys are more prone to giving you a nasty bite, being aggressive creatures that can catch you off guard while you swim. Not that you'll really want to spend much time in the water anyway, with it being a detriment to your life and all with that dodgy bacteria, though if you want to check out these creatures up close, or perhaps harvest some of the microbial tissue from a dead one, just be careful of one of its pack mates sneaking up from behind. These brains have got teeth. So that's the Alpha Centauri system out of the way. The next one in this guide we're going to be checking out is the Narian system, which has got two planets and one moon sustaining alien life, and a bunch of others that don't. And we're actually going to be visiting Crete first, which is a small moon that orbits Vansalon, 
a rocky place covered by volcanic wasteland, and somewhere you'll actually go fairly early on in the game during the campaign. Despite looking a bit barren and lifeless on the face of it, Crete does have a few creatures that are mainly crustacean-like, possibly the only ones to withstand its climate. And you might notice that our little trilobite friends from Gagarin can also be found here too. There isn't exactly a lot of life on this moon being mostly uninhabited, though these little guys can still be found scurried around all over the place, having a slightly different shell colour to match their environment, which sort of makes them look like giant wood lice. They've got exactly the same sort of characteristics as their Gagarin counterparts, and seem pretty well suited to Crete's dusty terrain. Another beast that might possibly be genetically related to the Trilobite, the Crete Stalker is basically a huge alien crab, also found on the moon's surface and within its cave systems. These things are covered in thick shells that give them added protection, which might sometimes be mistaken for boulders or rocks on the moon's surface. But unlike the Trilobites, the Crete Stalkers are more hostile creatures that are prone to attacking, which might not be a huge surprise with them looking all spiky and evil. These are the moon's apex predators, with them typically using ambush tactics, lying in wait for their prey to wander on by, only for them to rush out with those pincers snapping away at their target. Not only do the Stalkers have camouflage on their side, but they can also burrow underground and relocate, which goes hand in hand with their ambushes, or even to retreat from enemies in a fight if it's not going in their favour. Though when it comes to camouflage, there aren't many creatures that can top the Crete Grazer, which literally just looks like a walking pile of rocks. It's safe to say that this armour is pretty effective at both concealing the creature's whereabouts while providing it with extra padding, which will probably be needed with all the stalkers wandering around trying to turn them into a snack, which they will definitely do when given the opportunity. Though with the grazers being herbivores, they'll often feed on the moon's sparse plant life while hanging around in small herds for better protection. Obviously, if you get too close, they'll sound the alarm to alert the rest of the pack and then decide to either attack or run away, typically depending on what the other ones feel like doing. Engaging in a fight can potentially be dangerous, especially if there's a big herd all charging at you together, though don't expect these guys to be out there looking for a fight, with them only really becoming hostile if you seem like a threat. So another planet in the Narian system, home to alien fauna, is a planet called Sumati, where you'll be able to find four more creatures to add to the discovery. Although most of Starfield's life forms can look a bit weird, certainly one of the most bizarre looking insect type aliens can be found on this planet in the form of the Coral Heart Filterer. It's easy to see where this guy gets its name from, with its body structure being shaped like a love heart, but in between said hearts, if you look very closely, you'll see some sort of bluish transparent membrane stretched out inside, kind of making it look like it's got wings. Not to mention the fact that it's got about 20 eyes, loads of legs and a triangular shaped head, just to top things off. Coral hearts are skittish creatures that don't typically have many friends around, and although they can be found in lots of different biomes, they do seem to prefer the colder, icier climates the most, with them being much more common there. Another much bigger bug-like creature can also be found here, with Sumati being home to large groups of herding bone-backed scavengers, which look a bit like gigantic dung beetles. It's another creature with a tough shelled carapace, and this one's got a massive horn on top, which can be used as a weapon against its attackers, ramming them as they rush forwards. Aside from having lots of insect features, the bone-backed scavengers have pretty odd-looking faces, covered in dense hair with eye stalks sprouting out from it, probably to keep their faces warm with the planet being a bit on the nippy side. They've also got a trunk-like proboscis hanging down from their heads, which should probably be used for feeding, and generally you can expect to see quite a lot of them here, being one of the planet's most populated life forms. This also means that you've got to be careful as you navigate around though, as these guys definitely aren't friendly creatures by any means, and will probably rather gang up on you with all their mates than let you pass through their area. Definitely proceed with caution. Though the deadliest creature on the planet by far is the hunting crab, definitely something you'll need to be aware of if you're planning to pay Sumati a visit. As you could probably guess by the name, this creature's got crab-like features, though it's not like any other crab you've seen before. And also, as the name suggests, if you get on the wrong side of these things, they're gonna hunt you down relentlessly, with great speed and ferocity. Aside from having a, let's just say, interesting looking mouth, I think the devs did a bit of a naughty when designing this one, hunting crabs are lightning fast, able to outrun humans, while being equipped with huge pincers which can deal brutal amounts of damage. They're also able to react quickly to your gunfire by diving out of the way of it, while being backed up by lots of heavy armour, having that really durable shell. And just when you think you've got away from them by jumping on a high up boulder, well then they'll start to spit projectiles at you too, being pretty persistent buggers that really want you dead. If we head over to the ocean, we'll be able to find the schooling Kronosaurus Grazer, which can be found all over the place, under the water near the shoreline. They might look small from a distance, but they're actually a lot more intimidating up close. 
especially when they decide to dart straight at you unexpectedly, after they were drifting around in a dopey fashion just before. They're even more intimidating when they decide to rear that ugly head and show their nasty looking face in full glory too, having a fairly flashish body which sort of resembles a large rock, while its face is split in half, having its mouth set back in the centre. Pretty weird. With that said, these things do prefer to live a bit deeper down, rather than on the surface, so unless they come up to the top to try and scare the living crap out of you, you're probably not going to see much of them. So guys, we're on to the last planet with creatures in the Narian star system, and the last one in this guide. And that planet is one called Nero, with another four creatures for us to check out. Let's start off with one of the funkiest ones, with that being the flocking glow hands grazer, an alien with a pair of light bulbs for hand that always seems to look a bit surprised to see you. These guys have a bit of an insect type appearance in the way they're structured, but they probably resemble some sort of vibrant alien plant more than anything, which might be used as a bit of a defence mechanism to try and fool anything that might want to harm it, which can sometimes even be seen if you approach them as they lean forwards, looking a bit like a brightly coloured flower as they try their best to stay still. Glowhand grazers tend to stick around in small groups or pairs, rarely resorting to violence unless they're provoked and need to fend something away. They'll do this by waving those jazz hands around, or by flinging electrical pulses through the air at their attacker. Though more often than not, glow hand grazers are fairly timid things that will often run away if you start shooting at them, even if they're backed up by a bunch of others. Remember the cutter heads from earlier on? Well, they've also got relatives on this planet too, in the form of the flocking cutter head grazer, which looks very similar to their gemmers and counterparts, having very similar behaviour too, hanging around in herds which are prone to ganging up on you if you wind them up too much. You probably won't want to do that though, especially with these guys in particular, as unlike the other cutter heads, these variants can inflict laceration damage, which will need to be treated to avoid becoming a problem. And because there can be lots of these creatures all gathered around together, this makes it easier for one of them to sneak up behind and cause that infliction on you. Another familiar face also pops up on this planet too, as if you remember those gnarly crabs on Crete, well there's some similar looking crabs here too, only with a different paint job, and variations in the way they move and attack. With these being swarming stalker scorpions, they've ditched their hide and seek tactics for strength in numbers instead, unable to dig underground but potentially being much harder to deal with living in highly aggressive swarms which attack you on sight. Being able to scurry around quickly and lash out with those claws makes them deadly creatures that can be tricky to keep track of when there's multiple around, which is generally the case. They've got those tough shells too to help withstand damage, and they're also resistant to electromagnetic weapons too, so you're probably best to avoid using those on them. Though the planet's biggest pushover has got to be the Siren, a powerful lizard cat-like alien that hunts down pretty much anything it wants to. Now these things not only look the part, seeming like something you wouldn't want to mess with, having all that scaly armour, a muscular physique, and a jaw like a huge metal clamp, obviously something you won't want to get caught in, but they've also got that really thick hide, giving them extra health than other creatures, also making them more resilient to your attacks often prone to retreating from battle to avoid taking further damage, only to charge back into the fray again when they're ready for another round with you. Maybe those gigantic ear-like organs on their backs are used for listening out for prey, dashing over to take it out like a heat-seeking missile, or maybe they're just used for extra armour plating to give them a bit more protection as they go in for an attack. All we know is the Siren is the boss of Nero, and you might be best packing some extra firepower if you intend to roam on its turf. So those are all the alien creatures in Starfield that are native to the Alpha Centauri and Narian star systems. If you enjoyed the guide, let me know it by giving it a thumbs up and a comment, and if you want to discover more of those wacky creatures in Starfield, subscribe and stay tuned to see more guys like this coming up in the future. Thanks for watching folks, and I'll be seeing you in that next one.